I first covered Uranium Energy Core here on this channel back in March of 2021 when the stock, ticker symbol UEC on the New York Stock Exchange, was trading in the mid $2 range. Now, since that coverage, UEC has reached an all-time high. We did see a price of $6.54 toward the end of 2021, that before cooling down with the overall market as we entered 2022. In today's update video, we're going to look at how the Russian invasion of Ukraine, ESG, and of course, inflation has changed today's energy market and points to decades of sustained growth and development, plus adoption of nuclear energy, folks. Okay, so this, as you guessed it, all requires uranium. Now let's talk about the biggest physical uranium stacker that I know in the uranium game here in the United States, and that's going to be Uranium Energy Core UEC when we return. Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. Welcome back friends, both old and new. All right, so today we're going to do a quick update on some hot ticket issues that very well may see UEC reach its full potential, as expected as the market is now showing its first signs of stability. But probably more notable when it comes to UEC, how the overall energy sector has been rocked this year uh, by geopolitical events and of course, those things happening in the economy. Okay, so let's take a look at Russia. And let's face it, whether you're following the events today in Ukraine or not, there is a high likelihood that you've been directly impacted by it, financially speaking. Okay, so let's keep it straight. The crisis was beginning to unfold prior to the first Russian tank crossing into Ukraine, all right? The energy sector was largely out of favor by the Biden administration. That happened pretty much on day one and had been, you know, basically placed on the bench, right? The energy sector was taken off the field, no longer a starter, and placed on the bench when suddenly many Western nations began enacting economic sanctions on the Russian Federation, unwilling, of course, to uh, go to war with Russia directly, but looking for ways to sort of fight back and aid Ukraine by imposing these sanctions all right, but we've got a problem here. That sidelined energy sector, okay? Now a lot of countries are calling on them for help. All right, so yes, quite literally countries that, uh, you know, chose to fight back economically speaking, uh, but were at the same time dependent on Russian fossil fuels. Uh, well, this capped their ability to truly cripple the Russian economy and impact the war, all right? Add to the fact that many of these nations have pretty strict or tightening environmental policies, which make domestic exploration and production, you know, anywhere from difficult to impossible to take place, right? Then you've got a catch-22 scenario that uh, pretty quickly forced these impacted or uh, reliant nations to rethink their energy policy given the current geopolitical situation that had fully developed into the quagmire that is today, which shows no signs of ending. So how does a green thinking nation in need of energy meet its current and future energy needs? Well, you guessed it, all right? We're here to talk about Uranium Energy Core nuclear energy, all right, which is powered by uranium. So yes, investment in legislation that is uh, promoting nuclear energy has begun to grow once more in a lot of places around the world or for the first time. But for those of us in the United States, which uh, is my primary viewer population, uh, around about 80% of my viewers are here in the United States, this is important because domestic uranium production, that is interest in domestic uranium production and protecting uh, our country from imports uh, out of China and Russia, namely, uh, has really grown. Okay, so let's look at March 17th, 2022. Senator Barrasso leads a bill in the Senate to ban Russian uranium imports. Okay, we're uh, taking action here, our country, United States, against the Russian Federation for their invasion of Ukraine. So we're going to go ahead and block uranium imports. All right. Well, that has consequences. On March 25th, 2022, in response to the invasion of Ukraine, Congressman Pete Stauber, joined by Congressman Adrian Smith, Vincente Gonzalez, and Henry Cuellar, introduced legislation to ban imports of uranium from Russia. So you got the Senate and the House now. And on April 8th, 2022, Senators Manchin and Risch hope I pronounced that right, introduced the International Nuclear Energy Act of 2022, which creates the first U.S. nuclear fuels security initiative, which will reduce and eliminate reliance on Chinese and Russian nuclear fuels. Okay, 
that's where I'm at. Didn't mean to say fools. We're going to stick with fuels here. All right. So basically what we're seeing is a trend. And quite honestly, the need for nuclear energy continues to grow. That is the trend. And the war in Ukraine has pushed many governments to not only source uranium, but also to create, uh, you know, laws and legislation which uh, enables it, promotes it, and no longer prohibits it. Okay. So let's talk about a couple more key takeaways and why I'm, I'm pretty bullish here. Very bullish, actually, for uranium and for UEC, which currently holds a portfolio of 5 million pounds of U.S. warehouse U308 uranium, which has been purchased over several uh, previous years at an average spot price of 38 U.S. dollars per pound. Okay, so UEC currently has stacked or holds 5 million pounds of, uh, you know, uranium, fuel-grade uranium. Guys, UEC has the largest physical stockpile of uranium in the United States. Uh, imports from political rivals are being eliminated, and demand for uranium is rising. These are all good things. Okay, let's talk about some of the environmental impacts here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to focus a little less on the environmental impacts driving uranium demand, but I do feel that I need to reiterate the trend with it. And, uh, you, you know, you watch the news, right? A lot of you do. A lot of the world sees the need and has begun to make moves to fight global warming and produce cleaner energy than that of fossil fuels. Now, fossil fuels will likely continue to dominate global energy uh, for what I see as many years to come, okay? But with each passing year, interest and demand for cleaner, greener energy has increased, and we are seeing that politically with these recent bipartisan bills uh, that support domestic nuclear energy capable uranium, right? So nuclear energy is extremely dense. It's uh, highly reliable and very clean. Environmental social governance criteria for investment, that's ESG. Uh, these are companies, you know, that claim uh, to be uh, turning green or going green. Uh, well, that's adding further pressure on governments, all right? Uh, big corporations are adding pressure on governments too to turn against fossil fuels. Uh, this initiative, along with issues already discussed today, have jumped uh, jump started really nuclear discussion within governments previously opposed to nuclear energy. Okay, Finland recently started its first nuclear reactor in over 40 years. Just think about how close Finland is to Russia. They share a border. The United Kingdom has announced plans to increase its nuclear capacity from 7 gigawatts to 24 gigawatts by 2050. That's still decades off, but it is a notable increase going from 7 to 24 over the next 30 years. France, which already depends on nuclear energy for around about 70% of its production, has taken steps to build new reactors and has a plan to phase out some of those older reactors as it modernizes its nuclear energy production capacity. Okay, so this is good for France. The many other Western countries are making moves, and all of it will rely on uranium. Okay, so let's talk about the obvious here, and that is inflation. We've witnessed record government spending, which is already, uh, which was already occurring uh, long before the COVID pandemic. Okay, you can look at charts and graphs and see uh, how printing of fiat currencies has just really exploded, namely over the last 15 years, uh, going back to just before the Gulf War here in the United States. We saw record spending that just continues to uh, get even bigger and bigger and bigger every single year. It feels like as the deficit grows. The results have been pretty catastrophic for fiat currencies, and the dollar is no exception here, inflating by a reported 9.1% over the last 12 months here in the United States. And I will let you decide if those figures are accurate. Uh, just look at your bank statements from a year before and uh, you know, take a look and see you know, what you were spending at the grocery store, at the fuel, fuel pump, etc. And I think you can figure out what uh, inflation's impact has been on you. Okay, so inflation, war, and the continued disfavor of the prevailing energy sector by a lot of Western governments, namely here in the United States and Western Europe, well, they've made it, uh, they've made traditional fossil fuels that is quite expensive of late, okay? It was already out of favor. Um, and, uh, you know, the supply crunch with uh, Russia being cut off and you know, all the other uh, economic spending, which has just made all assets, all commodities uh, more expensive. Um, it just continues to grow and get worse and worse. So gas prices here in my area are already up well over 100% from just a year ago. That's insane. And no matter how it's spun in the news or, you know, Honestly, however you really want to look at it, it's the result of poor physical policy and poor energy policy, okay? To properly prepare and invest in a diversified energy production capability that really moves the needle here. 
And what I mean by that is we all hear and know about, you know, wind and solar energy, okay? And while it's mostly green and clean, it's just not capable of replacing fossil fuels today, okay? It's not. It's more like supplemental energy production and not a full replacement for uh, the current power grid, okay? So this is where nuclear energy really does begin to shine again because it's fully capable of replacing fossil fuels in many ways. All right, so we need clean, reliable, and affordable energy, and that's precisely why I really like uranium, especially um, you know, for the long-term outlook as our country begins to transition away, the world really begins to transition away from uh, carbon-based fuels. Okay, so let's get to price performance. And the stock has done pretty well. Okay, so let's pull up the chart here. And you can see that while volatile with uh, several uh, pretty sharp jumps and falls in price over the last year, the overall trend for Uranium Energy Core does remain upward. Okay, now this is another reason why as a shareholder, and I am a shareholder of UEC, uh, that I'm going to continue to look for further opportunities to buy on the dips here. All right, I see the volatility, but I know the direction we're headed UEC is also backed by a lot of big banks and investment firms, some that you've heard of like State Street, uh, Fidelity, UBS, and uh, the Canadian company Sprott. Uh, so strong capital backing here and a stable balance sheet as well. Uh, as of the last print, $182 million in cash on hand, no debt, that's important, and a lot of smart investments, right? They've invested and diversified across other companies. And of course, let's not forget that 5 million pounds of U308 uranium on hand. So the company is well poised for continued success, okay? Uh, uranium demand increases. They're ready to meet that demand uh, through their mining operation as well as what they've got on hand, all right? So let's wrap up this update with a few key points to consider when looking at Uranium Energy Core. First, everyone that's investing wants to make a profit. And if you look at the price history as well as the overall trajectory of UEC, well, it has shown us that the company is on the path for continued success, regardless of um, you know the current economic conditions in the market. Yes, things are pretty rough out there right now, but we are seeing higher highs and higher lows uh, in its price history, and that's a good sign. That's very positive. Secondly, the war in Ukraine has you know further strained an already strained energy industry, and geopolitical infighting has reduced the world's supply of energy. Okay. I mean, sides are being drawn here in this conflict. It's uh, maybe a little murky, but uh, regardless, it has definitely thrown a big wrench in the energy sector system. And as we talked about in this video, uh, a lot of Western countries are looking at ways to uh, no longer become dependent on other countries for their energy production. They're looking at other ways to <laughs> more or less power their country without all of the unnecessary political influence, okay? So this company, like several other companies also that I have covered, is owned by Amir Adnani. He's a very successful entrepreneur and owner of uh, several profitable businesses that I've covered here in the channel. So you've got a winning product, um, a winning business, great leadership. It's based here in the United States, so domestically for many of my viewers. And this industry and company also has strong financial backing, along with political backing, especially of late with this latest conflict. Okay, these are all good things. That's what UEC is to me as an investor. All right, <laughs> just, to, just to clarify, I, I never uh, think war is a good thing. But from an investment standpoint, you're seeing the uh, energy sector rocked. There is a, a push, a surge for cleaner uh, energy that uh, that can meet the demands of the growing population on this world. So if you're interested in learning more about UEC, its operations, its pursuits, and how to invest in the company, then please see the video description section down below where I'll have uh, several useful links for you to access that will take you directly to UEC's website. Uh, in my opinion, the case looks stronger than ever for clean energy, and nuclear energy has the capability of, of really doing something uh, to remove our dependency off of oil and gas. Uh, it's domestically provided. And, uh, you know, when you look at nuclear energy, it all comes down to uranium. So definitely one to consider. And I'd like to thank you once more for viewing today. And I also hope to see you back soon on another video. Thanks again, all. Thank you for watching our video. I hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel.